Okay, make sure that you are in your reconstruction section of your Unit 6 notebook. Go ahead and add this learning target to your reconstruction page. I can explain how reconstruction shaped the South after the Civil War. Okay, so Reconstruction. This was the federal plan for readmitting the Confederate States to the Union. Just to recap, uh, last time we talked, the Confederacy had just surrendered to the Union after um, the fall of Richmond, which was the Confederate capital, and the Confederates officially surrendered when Lee surrenders to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia. Now, the war is over. The plan is now to bring the South in back to join the Union as quickly and efficiently as possible, and we need to rebuild the South because of all of the damage that had happened there during the war. All right, so there are three Reconstruction Amendments, three changes to the Constitution that are passed during this Reconstruction time period. The first one is we freed the slaves from their bondage in the United States. This is the amendment that officially ends slavery. The 14th Amendment gives all former enslaved people their citizenship in the United States. So now they have citizenship, meaning that they have the rights of a U.S. citizen. And the 15th Amendment gave all male former slaves that right of suffrage, that right to vote. Go ahead and add all three of these amendments to your digital notebook. Now, there are multiple plans that come about for Reconstruction. Our first plan is going to be brought to us by Mr. Abraham Lincoln, Mr. President. Um, this presidential plan for Reconstruction was um, going to be a very quick plan. However, it doesn't get carried out because, as we know, and we talked about last time, he dies. He gets assassinated just a couple of days after the end of the war. So while his plan is thought out, it does not end up taking effect. His plan was to in, or implement this idea of a 10% plan. Only 10% of Southern um, citizens that voted would have to pledge loyalty to the Union in order for the entire South to be readmitted. So only 10%, that means 90% didn't have to. Confederates would be pardoned, meaning forgiven, and their private property would be protected. So again, going pretty easy on the Southerners here. Lincoln wants Reconstruction to happen really, really quickly, but he's assassinated before his plan could be carried out. Go ahead and add Lincoln's plan to your digital notebook real quick. Okay. So when Lincoln is assassinated, his vice president, Andrew Johnson, ends up taking um, the presidency. He becomes a 17th president, and his plan for Reconstruction is a little bit different than um, Lincoln's plan was. So Johnson's plan for reconstruction is going to be a little bit more intense than Lincoln's plan was. Um, for starters, pardons would be granted only to those that took a loyalty oath. So you would only be forgiven if you pledged your loyalty. Um, no forgiveness would be given to those that owned property valued at more than $20,000, which was considered a lot of money back then. So this kind of, is, it keeps the wealthy from easily being able to buy their forgiveness. States needed to abolish slavery before being readmitted. That means that the states had to completely implement that 13th Amendment. And states would need to repeal or take back their se or secession ordinances before they could be readmitted to the Union. So they basically had to say, oh, we were just kidding. Sorry, I take it back um, in order to rejoin. Go ahead and add Johnson's plan for reconstruction to your digital notebook. All right, so neither Lincoln's plan nor Johnson's plan are going to actually go into effect because of this group right here, the Radical Republicans. The Republicans in Congress didn't want us to go as easy on the South, and they felt like Lincoln and Johnson were both being way too generous to the South during this time, and they come up with their own plan for Reconstruction, which they end up passing. So they passed the Reconstruction Act of 1867, which breaks the South up into five military districts. They absolutely force the states to not only pass the 13th Amendment, but they have to pass the 14th Amendment as well. Not only can they free the slaves, but they also need to grant them their citizenship. They claim that they need to impeach um, Andrew Johnson because he's not being hard enough on the South. They believe that he is conspiring with the South and therefore not upholding his duties as the president. They also passed the Civil Rights Act in order to protect all of the um, rights surrounding the freed African-Americans after the Civil War. 
Go ahead and add these descriptions to your digital notebook. So these are the five districts that the South gets broken up into. These are the military districts. Um, so Congress passes this Military Reconstruction Act that divides the South into five districts. The Union military would enter the South to enforce the laws that were created by the radical Republicans. So basically they're going in there just to punish the South and make sure that they are following these new laws. Johnson completely disagrees with these tactics, or tactics but Congress vetoes or says no to Johnson's attempts to stop them. Johnson and Congress have a whole lot of conflict during this time, which leads to Johnson's impeachment in 1868. Now, it's important to note that Johnson was impeached, but he was not convicted, so he was not actually removed from the presidency, similar to what we saw during um, your lifetime during Donald Trump's presidency. Go ahead and add these to your notebook. So Johnson's the first successful impeachment of a president in the United States, um, which, you know, maybe makes you an unsuccessful president after all. Okay, let's talk about the laws or legislation that were passed during the Reconstruction time period. The first one is going to be the Dawes Act. So the Dawes Act allows the presidents to survey Native American tribal land and divide it up into plots for individual natives. Um, this kind of goes along with the um, Jacksonian era of how we treated the Native Americans, where we are not technically supposed to be taking federal land or native lands, but they do it anyways, and they get away with it. Go ahead and add this to your notebook. We also passed the Morrill Act during this time period, which provides grants of land to be used for colleges specializing in agricultural and mechanical arts. So a little fun fact for you, Texas A&M University whoop, is a land grant college and has a large agricultural studies department. Um, you'll notice the A and the M in Texas A&M stand for agricultural and mechanical studies. So, you know, gig them. They're creating these colleges um, as ways to provide education opportunities. And then they've got the Homestead Act that they passed. The Homestead Act encourages westward migration by promising settlers 160 acres of land for five or more years of residency. So we are encouraging people to move westward. This has a lasting impact on the United States by drawing people out into the West. So our population is going to spread. Go ahead and add this to your notebook. All right. Now, there are a lot of negative effects of Reconstruction as well. For example, Black Codes. Black Codes were laws that were passed by the Southern states that limited the rights of African Americans. Examples of these Black Codes included restriction on um, African Americans' right to own property, to conduct business, and to buy and lease land and move freely, or freely throughout public spaces. So this was essentially just an extension of those slave codes that had existed before the Civil War, now these black codes are put into place where they're free, but are they truly free with all of these limitations that are being placed on them? Go ahead and add this description to your notebook. All right? Another example are Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws were laws that were passed in Southern states to enforce segregation and reinforce those black codes. So that's whenever you see, you know, the drinking fountains that were white versus colored, you know, whites only, uh, coloreds only. So this was when segregation is really going to take effect. This is going to last all the way until the 1960s. So this is going to last for almost 100 years. The KKK is also an organization that is created during this time period. 
um, it's important to talk about because this is a very um, negative social impact of Reconstruction. These former Confederate soldiers founded the KKK after the American Civil War had ended, and they used violence and intimidation to prevent African Americans from voting and holding office and to keep them segregated. So um, the Ku Klux Klan was a group that popped up all over the South, and their main goal was to keep suppressing African Americans even after they had passed the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. So um, important to talk about because it's a very negative effect of Reconstruction on our nation. There are three different kinds of voting restrictions that are put into place. So the 15th Amendment talks about how, you know, African Americans that are males now have the right to vote in the United States, but did they really because of these voting restrictions? Not really. So the first thing was literacy tests. Literacy tests um, required that citizens prove that they could read in order to vote. Well, leaving the slavery era, slaves were not given the ability to read. They weren't given an education. So a lot of these former slaves that were now free couldn't pass these literacy tests. This is going to bar them from being able to vote. The second one is going to be the grandfather clause. Citizens had to prove that their grandfather was eligible to vote in order to be able to vote themselves. Many of these um, former slaves did not have grandfathers that had the ability to vote because the 15th Amendment had just gone into effect. This was another thing that barred them from being able to vote. The last thing is the poll tax. This required that citizens pay to vote. A lot of these former enslaved people did not have high enough paying jobs that they could pay these taxes. A lot of them were stuck in the sharecropping system. So they don't have the money to be able to pay these poll taxes. Once again, they are being restricted from the right to vote. These restrictions do not go away um, until the Voting Rights Acts are passed in the mid 1900s. So these are going to be around for a while. Go ahead and add these to your notebook. So let's talk about that sharecropping system. Um, so this is the system that kept African Americans indebted to their former masters because it made them dependent for land, food, and supplies. So a lot of these former slaves found out that they were free, and they're like, okay, now what? Well, their former masters would say, oh, well, you can still work on this land and you can own some of it, but in order to, you know, pay for the land that I'm giving you to work on, some of your crops have to come back to me. And it just became this cycle of poverty where... These African Americans that were working in the fields just could not meet the demands of the masters, so they were constantly indebted, and it was like a second system of slavery in a sense. Now, there are some positive effects of Reconstruction that come out of here as well. For example, Hiram Rhodes Rebels. Hiram Rhodes Rebels is going to be effect, er, elected as the very first African American senator elected to Congress. He is a Mississippi congressman. He's going to be from the South. This is a huge, huge win. He served as a Republican senator for Mississippi. All right. Another really important thing is going to be the Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau was a federal agency that set up schools and hospitals, handed out clothes, food, and, or food and fuel to these um, African Americans that were in the South. These uh, or this Freedmen's Bureau provided access to job opportunities and educational opportunities that otherwise these newly freed enslaved people that are now free wouldn't have had options to or have known about. Go ahead and add this to your notebook. Okay, so other important terms that you need to know about Reconstruction, um, the term scalawag. These were poor white Southern farmers that went along with radical Reconstruction. So these are people that did not own slaves, but they lived in the South and they decided that Reconstruction was the better choice because it meant that the system of slavery was officially ending. Carpetbaggers are going to be white northerners that rushed the south with their little bags made out of carpet in order to make money. Both scalawags and carpetbaggers are going to be very negatively viewed by um, southerners that had been in support of the confederacy. Um, not only were African Americans targets of the KKK, scalawags and carpetbaggers were as well. So Reconstruction does come to an end eventually, but much later than Lincoln would have hoped. So 
So the Amnesty Act is passed, and this allows Confederates to run for office again. This brings back the return of Southern Democrats starting to take control of government in the South. So former Confederates have been blocked from being allowed to run for office. The Amnesty Act, or the Forgiveness Act, in a sense, basically allows these former Confederates to start running for office again. Slowly, the South is going to return to um, the Southern Democrat control that had been absent during the majority of the Reconstruction period. So you're going to see a lot of Southerners, now that they can vote again and now that they can participate in elections again, voting for white Southern Democrats instead of Republicans and instead of for the freedmen that finally had the opportunity to run for office. And then Reconstruction officially ends with the Compromise of 1877. So this guarantees that Rutherford B. Hayes would become the 19th president of the United States. So this presidency was essentially given to him. Um, in exchange for removing the military from the South, um, the South promised that they would protect the new rights of these freed African-Americans. They do not hold up their end of the bargain. And instead, they institute those Jim Crow laws, those segregation laws that we talked about, as well as black codes. So Rutherford B. Hayes is given the presidency in exchange for the end of Reconstruction. And um, he does not hold up his end of the bargain. He does not hold the Southern Democrats to their word um, where they're supposed to be protecting the rights of African-Americans. And Reconstruction ends and the South starts to put in those Jim Crow laws and segregation begins in the South. So this happens with the Compromise of 1877. Go ahead and add this to your notebook, please. All right. That's all. That is the end of new information that you have to learn for this year. Let's start reviewing for the STAR test now. Go ahead and publish your digital notebook and let's begin our